Okay, thank you all for joining the FOCUS webinar today. I'm going to turn it over to Jason Birch with FOCUS Software for the presentation. Go ahead, Jason. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Gary. I just want to say thank you very much for inviting us along today. Really appreciate um, all the work you do and, and the opportunities you give us to, to come along and speak. Uh, thanks to the, the Tug Group and, and also thanks to everybody that's, that's attended today. We know you're all busy. Um, we know it's uh, it's not probably the most interesting thing to sit on a on a, a webinar for an hour, but hopefully we'll um, we'll we'll make uh, today very useful, very interesting for you, uh, and give you something to uh, take away um, that that might uh, benefit the business going forward. Um, so my name is Jason Birch. Um, I'm here today to talk to you about focus. What I'd like to do is introduce the idea of, of focus, introduce the concept. What do we do? Um, how do we work with the, the various info products? Um, what can we bring to your business? Um, and, and then run through a little bit of uh, the application itself. So it's going to be a, a few slides, um, not death by PowerPoint by any means, but, but, but a few slides to set the scene, and then the application. Um, as Gary said, we will be stopping um, at the end for, for Q&A and, and, and during um, the, the presentation too, in between the, the live demo and the presentation but if you've got questions at any point please do just raise your hand using the the, the, the chat bar down the right hand side um, and uh, Gary will, will find a, an opportune moment to kind of interrupt me hopefully not too much mid-flow and um, we'll try and answer those questions as we go if we can so um so strap yourselves in and uh, let's go so what is focus focus um, a little bit about focus the company first of all we were we were set up in, in the late 90s, so we've been doing this now for about 16, almost 17 years. Um, we've got well over 1,000 customers, um, and all of those customers, almost exclusively those customers, work within the wholesale distribution or manufacturing sectors. So the application that we have is designed for companies that are in those sectors. We don't, we don't typically work with banks and insurance companies and so on. Almost everybody is selling or making something um, that you can touch and hold and, and ship to, to a customer. Um, we've, we've been doing this, this for about 16 years now, um, built up an awful lot of experience. Our business um, is geared towards your type of, of company. Our staff typically will come from within the distribution uh, industry themselves. So we've got an awful lot of people who have either been IT managers or salespeople um, or marketing managers within the distribution industry working on implementing, supporting, and, and, and selling the product. So we really do understand um, the verticals that you guys are in. Uh, we have excellent M4 integrations. So we work with um, any ERP, um, but we've worked very closely on uh, with, with lots of SXE and FAX and SHIMS customers over the years. Um, and, and we've built uh, some excellent integrations that allow our product to work brilliantly with um, with those various ERPs. Focus is offered as software as a service, so it's a subscription, which essentially means that that you pay for the the users that you you have um, on a, on a recurring basis, whether it be quarterly or, or yearly, um, and if you don't get benefit from that 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 subscription from that service, then you can switch it off. So we have to work really, really hard to retain our customers to can keep that, 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 that stream of revenue coming in um, and to keep you guys happy. Um, now we work, we do it, we do it really well. We, we have a, currently have a 97% customer retention. So less than 3% of our customers uh, leave each year, uh, which is extraordinarily high. For, for the software industry, software as a service industry. Um, but we're not resting on our laurels. We're always working um, on new ways to, to, to uh, improve the product, to improve our service, to improve the value to the businesses we work with. We aim to set up long-term partnerships with, with our customers, not um, just sell it and forget it. So, so focus is absolutely in it for the long haul. Um, and, and hopefully that retention rate will, um, will speak towards that. Um, probably want to know what Focus is. We've told you how you buy it and, and who we are as a company. What is it? So Focus is a, a business intelligence and data, data analytics tool. So what it allows you to do is to get an easier, uh, quicker, better look at the data that sits within um, within your ERP, whether that's whether that's SHIMS or SXE or, or FAX or whatever. Um, we offer data analytics. So 
the ability to kind of slice and dice that data, drill through, get to the, the real roots of, uh, of issues that you're finding. Uh, we have the ability, and Focus gives you the ability to very easily, very simply visualize what's going on. So if you want to see a, a pie chart of your product mix, or if you want to see a, a line graph showing you the trend um, of your sales in a particular product line, or the average sale price, really, really easy to do in Focus, just a one-click um, approach. We do offer uh, the ability to do all of this um, via a web browser, and that means that it, it's then available on, on any um, device. So you can pull Focus up in the web browser on your, your phone, on your tablet, or on your PC or, or, or laptop. We offer the ability to, to, to collaborate as well. So lots of, of, of tools out there will allow you to, to maybe write a, a decent report and, and run it um, when you need it. But Focus kind of takes it that next step and allows you to kind of start to have a, a conversation around that, that report, around that content. So collaboration is the ability for, for, for users to, to comment on, on the trends, on the issues they're seeing. Um, uh, and work together and, and, and as, as we said here, collaborate in, in finding a solution for it. Focus off also offers the ability to create dashboards, um, do some more standard reporting rows and columns, um, uh, tabular type reports. Uh, and we also offer the ability to do some geospatial analysis. If, so if, you're, if your uh, customer base is spread over a wide area, you may want to look at where, where you're able to sell, where you've got gaps uh, from a geographical sense as well. So all of that comes um, within the product um, as standard. There's, n that there's no add-on that you have to buy to, to allow you to use it on a mobile or, or allow you to, to create dashboards. It's the, the, the full package comes with the, the product. Um, in terms of, of how we've been recognized over the years, every single year there will be um, things like the BARC Business Intelligence Survey, which is the world's largest survey of, of business intelligence users. Um, there are also lots of online uh, review sites like G2 Crowd and Crowd Reviews and so on. Uh, we've ranked number one across all of those um, consistently for a, for, a, for a decent amount of time. All of that information, all of those surveys, all those reviews are based upon end users um, feedback. So it's not um, the, the, the president of the business who bought the software but no one else is feeding back. This is people that, that live and breathe the, breathe the software day in, day out. Um, and that kind of um, recognition, that kind of feedback kind of lends uh, a little bit more credence to the, the fact that we retain our, an almost 97, sorry, almost 98 percent of our customers from year to year. It's because the end users are engaged, because there's a return on investment, but it's because people get some benefit from having this software uh, installed and, and available to them. Uh, we're also been listed on, uh, on, the, on the Fast 50, uh, which is uh, companies to keep an eye on in terms of growth and, and, um, and reach in, in the software industry. So, so we're being recognized, we're being um, identified as a, as a company that, that that people want to associate with, that people want to uh, stay with, and would recommend to, to um, their peers if, if pressed. Um, so what does Focus do? It gives you some nice charts and graphs. On the right-hand side there, you can see some of the, the visualizations that we do. It gives you some, some, some really good views on your data. Uh, it gets, lets you get into that data really quickly and really easily. But, but what's the benefit? What's the end, um, end goal? Well, here we've got a couple of quotes. We've got hundreds of quotes. If you go to our, soft, uh, our website at focussoftware.com, there's lots and lots of testimonials, white papers, and so on from our customers that you can, you can browse through. Um, and if you know any of the guys, definitely reach out to them and, and speak to them, find out what their uh, take on, on the software is. But there's a couple of snippets here. The first one is Michael Riley, uh, Riley Sales. They found a, an additional $100,000 in business uh, from using Focus. So they found areas where they could sell more um, product into the existing customer base, in, increase their their market penetration, and and, um, and get some of their customers buying more from them um, with very little effort. It's very easy to identify who who's uh, got a gap in, in their product mix and, and target them. So, so for that company, an extra hundred thousand dollars. For the guys that are Gateway Supply, they managed to increase their 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 margin um, by a couple of points. Um, so if you guys do the math, you, you know how much you turn over. Uh, if you could increase your, your, your margin by a couple of percentage points just from implementing a, a, a piece of reporting software, 
um, you know what that would bring to your business. It's it's not um, it's not insignificant. So bringing dollars back into the um, into the bottom line um, is what focus is all about. Um, in terms of integrations, focus kind of will, as I said, will integrate with any system. So it doesn't matter whether you're talking your ERP systems, whether you're talking the info products, or whether you're talking CRM tools. It could be Salesforce. It could be an Excel spreadsheet. It could be anything in your business that captures data. Um, so first of all, we connect. So we can connect to, to any of the major players. Um, lots and lots of experience over the years of, of creating um, bespoke uh, solutions for, for lots of these um, applications. Um, focus, once you've, connect, once you've connected to data, we can schedule those updates so it's automatic. There's no need for anybody to go in and refresh anything to, to pull new data through. Um, the, the process within Focus is to, to schedule those updates, pull that data in on a, on a nightly basis or um, weekly or hourly, whatever, whatever works for the particular set of data you're, you're looking at. Um, and then what we do is once we pull that data in, we create so we design in our database designer tool a series of solutions. So it may well be that some companies only want to analyze sales. That's their big pain point. So they're going to create a sales database and have their salespeople access that and, and slice and dice and analyze. But other companies may want to analyze um, their purchasing patterns and start to, to look at their, their vendors and see how they're performing. Other companies want to, to really dig deeper on the, on the financials. Um, so Essentially, with Focus, you have the ability to, to create any type of um, analysis area or database um, for your end users to then dive into. Uh, and when those end users dive in, Focus puts a layer of user security over the top, which essentially means that you can restrict what people see. So there's an awful lot of data, potentially an awful lot of data there. Some of that may be sensitive. Some of it may be information that you don't want your uh, end users to see all of. So Focus allows you to create a layer of user security so that each rep maybe only sees their own uh, customers when they're analyzing sales. Um, the, the sales team can't see any of the financials, can't see your general ledger postings and so on. So you, you can control that on a user-by-user -user basis what they can and can't see and what they can and can't do. Um, and then those end users come in and analyze. And they're going to analyze that data in, in um, a few ways. They, could, they can consume that data on a laptop or a PC, as we mentioned before. But they could also pick it up on, on their phone or their, their tablet if they're out in the, the field visiting a customer or, or meeting a, uh, a vendor or a customer at a trade show. So, Lots and lots of ways for people to get at that data, um, leverage it to, to improve um, how they're interacting with, with their customers and their vendors, um, and drive the business forward. Okay. So we're going to jump into the, the demo now. We're going to run through um, the, the live demo of Focus. We're going to show you around the application itself. Before we do that, I just wanted to, to give a, a chance, an opportunity. Has anybody got any questions on anything we covered in the slideshow? Not seeing any questions just yet, so continue on, Jason. Awesome. Thank you. All right, so let's just, uh, let's just switch across now. I'm going to go into my web browser. Um, and here I'm just at the, the home screen. So what you'll see, the first thing you'll notice is that everything's happening in a web browser. We've got a URL. Um, that URL can sit either um, out in the, the cloud so we can host the application for you, or you can actually do it on-premise if you wanted to. So we, we've got a, a good portion of our customers who have Focus installed uh, on a server or a couple of servers um, on site. Everything sits behind their firewall on their network only, and um, and people access it whenever they're, they're VPNed in. So Focus can sit in the cloud or on-premise. Um, I'm going to log in now. I've got my username and password. That's going to allow me um, to, to access certain parts of data in, in the system. This login and password can be, um, uh, we can pass off the authentication onto LDAP. So it can be a Focus-specific login and password, or it can be your, your LDAP. Uh, single sign-on, uh, whichever you guys want to do. Okay. So I'm going to hit sign in now. And when I hit sign in, Focus takes me to my home page. So for me, I've imaginatively 
uh, called my homepage, Jason's homepage. Uh, you could call it whatever you want. Um, you could have a same homepage for every single user in the system. So it could be that you have a standard standard landing page that everyone comes to. You could have one specific to every single user. You could have it specific to types of users and completely up to you. Um, this homepage, this landing page, gives me, as a, a sales manager, the, the ability to see what's going on in the business from a sales perspective. But this could be any sets of data coming in. It may well be that, that if you're an executive in the business, you may have um, accounts receivable positions and um, cash at the bank and, uh, and inventory, dead stock levels, everything feeding through to this dashboard. In this case, we don't have that. We just have sales. This is sales specific this time. Uh, and what I've got here is on screen is a, a series of, of um, areas that I can analyze. So first of all, I can look at my sales versus budget. And this is broken out by the various types of customers that we sell to. So we've got healthcare and manufacturing and retail. And I can see where I'm ahead of target. So again, in selling into distribution, um, where we're almost, um, almost a million ahead of target. But here in education, we're, we're lagging behind. Okay, so we can see from a top level what's going on. We can also see how our sales values and sales margins are trending over uh, the last 12 months. So we can absolutely see um, if an increase in sales corresponds with a dip in profitability and vice versa. Um, I can see here my sales growth. How am I looking this year versus last? At the moment, I'm running at a, not quite a healthy 5%, just underneath 4.5% uh, here. Uh, we want to be pushing on and, and growing the business a little bit more um, if we can. Uh, so hopefully in the rest of the year, we'll be able to catch up. But I can see here 4.5% growth. I can now also see in terms of the, the, the current 12 months um, sales, I can see how that mix looks. So here I've got my, my mix of customers, types of customers. Here I've got the product categorizations or classes of products that I sell. Um, and here I'm seeing it broken out by location. Um, for this company, we happen to sell into to multiple countries, but these could be uh, the branches that you guys have or the states that you sell into, anything really that you want to break out by. Now this dashboard, this is the standard um, a kind of a standard offering, if you like, but every single customer has the ability to and, and will customize and change their dashboards to match their business. So this is just our take on what might be uh, useful for you. You can absolutely, in a matter of seconds, make changes and amend these dashboards and scorecards to, to, to match your business. Um, as I scroll down, we've got a few other things to look at. Here I'm seeing how um, changes in volume of, of sales affects my margin. If I come down a bit further, I've now got um, a series of shortcuts. So if I wanted to, I could dive off into other dashboards that I, that I use on a regular basis, or perhaps some of the favorites, the more traditional style reports that I want to run on a regular basis. So my homepage really does have everything I might want to reach out and touch in any given day. Uh, let's scroll down a bit further. And we mentioned earlier on uh, kind of geospatial. Uh, so here I can see, in this case, I can look at my, my, my biggest um, revenue uh, spots uh, in terms of uh, sales. I can see where I'm, I'm doing really well in terms of sales volume, but I can also see where I'm doing well in terms of sales growth. Um, so all of this comes straight out of the box. There's nothing at all that you need um, uh, to, to add or buy. Um, in addition, you don't need to buy a separate mapping tool or anything. Fo focus comes with dashboards. Um, uh, the, the geospatial analysis, and all of the rest of the slice and dice ability that you're going to see uh, in a minute uh, straight out of the box. Okay. So I normally kind of just pause here just to see if there's any questions with regards to the dashboard. This, is, this, this will often throw up some questions. If not, I'll, um, I'll, I'll, I'll power on. No questions yet. Continue on. Excellent. Thank you. Um, so here's my start point. I've now seen where we are. I'm seeing where we're up and down. I want to know more, though. I, I maybe want to know more about um, what's going on in terms of my business, um, but maybe I'm just interested in one part of the business. So maybe uh, today I'm, I'm going to really concentrate on, on the US. So I'm going to select the US in that pie chart now. So I've just highlighted the US. And I'm going to hit focus up here. So this button here is, is basically saying, I only want to know about the area I've just clicked on. So I've just, I'm just looking at the US now. And what I can now see is what the product mix looks like in the US. I can see what the, um, sorry, the customer 
mix looks like in the US, what the product mix looks like, how my sales are looking year on year, um, how I'm comparing to budget across the board. Uh, everything is just updated now um, based upon that selection. And if I wanted to drill in further at this point, if I wanted to say, well, I just want to now look at, at lights and lamps in terms of a product class, I can focus in on that. So now I'm looking at just the US and just one type of product. Okay, so this dashboard is interactive. It allows you to kind of slice and dice and, and make selections and filters as we go. What it also allows you to do at any point in time um, is either remove those filters. So I could actually just go and now look at product class D, but for the whole world by removing that filter. But what I could also do is I can actually drill in on any of these and see the detail behind. So maybe my sales growth for that product in that location is down. Let me drill in and see what's going on. So I can click on Analyze, and that takes me into the underlying data. So as I go in, it's already filtered to that product class and that, that, that location. Okay, And now I can see what's causing that dip. Um, and it's, a, it's a, a, few different product, uh, a few different reps that are struggling. I can see uh, Judy down by 200,000. I can see... Uh, Kathleen down by 154. So there's a few people here struggling. I'm going to go for, for the, the biggest ticket item here. I'm going to look at, at Judy. So I'm going to focus in on Judy. And I'm now going to drill in further. So this is now the analysis tool that we're in. This is the grid. So you've got the dashboards, which are all the visualizations. And then you've got the grid, which is the real meat, if you like, of the, the data where we can slice and dice. Now, I'm looking at Judy. I can see uh, how Judy's doing year on year. I may want to kind of drill into that, though. I may want to take that a little bit further. So perhaps I want to look at uh, um, where Judy sells to. So maybe I'm going to go off and take a look at the various uh, territories, the various states that she sells into. Is she struggling in a particular state? Well, I can see here that uh, for, um, for Oregon, she's, she's down $63,000. So I may want to drill in on that. Or I may want to break it out by something else. Maybe I want to look at the different customer types that Judy sells to. Um, she's really struggling in manufacturing. Uh, maybe I want to look at the individual customers themselves, so I can go that direction. So hopefully what you're seeing here, hopefully you're, what you're getting a feel for is that you can go as an end user, as a sales manager, as a sales rep, you can go wherever the data takes you. You're not restricted to one way of analyzing information. You're not restricted to going through a drill path, uh, running a, a report that, that you've run 10 times before, but you don't have any variation on. Focus gives the ability to go wherever you want. Okay, so I've got a list now here of all my customers that are up and down. I can see guys that are really struggling down $63,000, um, 77% year on year. Maybe I want to take a look at those guys and drill into the individual product that they buy and see if there's a, a particular issue there. Is it a particular product line that they're, they're struggling with? Um, I could also, if I wanted to, change what I'm looking at. At this time, moment in time, I'm looking at sales value. But maybe I want to look at the number of units they're taking from me as well. Or perhaps I want to look at the profitability. So I could bring any bits of information in here and, and really get a, a, a good look at, at what's going on, not just look at the top level dollar figure. Okay. The other thing I could do is if I wanted to go out and meet this customer and see this customer, I've got a, I'm getting a, bit, a pretty good picture that they're, they're struggling, we're struggling to sell into these guys, it's across the board, but I want to know more. I can click on the customer ID and run a customer scorecard, and what this is going to do is going to run a report, run a, a view that's um, giving me a, a, a lowdown on this specific customer. I can see overall they're down 71% year on year. I can see how their product mix compares to all the, the customers that we sell to. Um, I can see how their product um, sales are trending over a period of time. Uh, I come down further and I can see all the products that they're up in and how much they're up, and all the products they're down in and how much they're down. Uh, we've even got a bit of that um, uh, information, um, that collaboration that we talked about before. So, so uh, people have, have started to make comments on this, this particular report and, and, and and in one case, notice that, that they're a bit worried about this customer. So it's, it's the ability to create and design content that helps you make decisions, that helps you interact um, with your customers and your base, and also allows you to interact with the people that are going to consume that data, uh, the end users and, and your staff. So it's, a, it's about a two-way communication 
um, and about leveraging that data. Okay. Any questions? Um, and you have to say no every time, Gary. Just if if there isn't, then uh, just leave it quiet. That's cool. <laughs> I, I'm sure you must be getting fed up unmuting each time. No, no, no. Now there's there is one question. What about scheduling a report to be emailed as a PDF with data filtered for the end user? Absolutely. So yeah, we, we, we can absolutely do that. So so any any of the anything that you do. So for example, let's say um, let's just clear this report here. Um, and let's say I want a report that looks at sales by product class. Um, it does a variance year on year, and it looks at um, sales and uh, profit. So that's the view that I want to receive on a regular basis. All I need to do is save that favorite, um, and perhaps you save that favorite and put it into a, a shared folder where um, all the users that you want to have access to it are, uh, are at. Or you can go through and pick particular uh, users. Once you've saved that report, you can then, any of the users on there, or as an administrator, you can go in and say, subscribe these users. They receive it every Monday at 7 a.m., or they receive it every day at, at midnight um, as a PDF or a CSV or an Excel attachment. So absolutely, anything that you're doing on, on screen here can be saved as a favorite, and any favorite can then be scheduled. Okay. No other questions. Um, so, hopefully, from from what we've seen so far, you, you're getting a feel for for the the fact that focus is a a pretty powerful analysis tool. You can do some nice visualizations. Um, you can you can build up a um, a starting point and a, and a and a route through the data that makes sense to your end users. And you can also uh, start to have those guys um, have some buy-in and have some input into that, that um, process through, through the collaboration side of things. People can make comments on reports that they, they've been shared and, and so on. Um, what we can also do with Focus, and, and um, it's, it's worth uh, taking you through that, is look at things a slightly different way um, again. So, so here we're looking um, at sales, we're looking at a variance view. Um, focus has got lots of views built into it. So at any point in time in Focus, you can come in and you can say, well, I don't want to see that variance view. Maybe I want to look at it as a period view. So I can see month by month, how am I doing? So I can see my sales value trending over a period of time. I can see my profit trending over a period of time. Okay. At any point, as we've seen before, we can throw that into a, a visualization um, and, and see, how that's, uh, see how that's breaking down. Okay. There, there's, um, there's another question out there. Um, yep. Do you do any customer stratification that measures customers against other customers and grades them overall and by different factors on the customer scorecard? Um, that's an excellent question. So, so we do have customers. Absolutely, we have customers out there who have um, have a, a methodology for for. Um, for gauging and, and rating their customers, look at them in terms of profitability, cost to serve, um, how quickly they pay their invoices, and so on. Um, because every customer would want to do that, and in our experience has wanted to do that in a different way, we don't have a methodology that we follow. But lots of our customers have, uh, have, uh, have said, we'd like to do it this way. Um, some of them are doing um, activity-based costing and building um, uh, true profitability reports and, and using that. Others are looking at regularity of purchase and speed to pay. Um, so we've absolutely built databases that will allow people to analyze their customers in that way. But it's based upon each customer's um, unique uh, requirement on how they'd like to do it. We don't, we don't have a, a customer stratification model um, that we always follow. We, we work. We work with different customers to, to build the one that they want. Um, hopefully that answers the question. So the, the short answer is we don't have a standard, but we've done it loads of times with, with customers based on what they want. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Um, so coming back to this, this view here, as I said, we've got lots of ways of, uh, of seeing the data. Uh, we can look at periods, we can look at moving, we can look at variance, we can, we can look at our activity versus other sets of data. So in this case, we've pulled in 
um, our targets from an Excel spreadsheet and we're comparing that to our actual. So I'm going to say bring in a, a budget stream and compare it to my sales stream. I'm actually just going to look at my, my sales value here so it's a little bit easier to see on screen. So now I can see across my, my various product lines how my, my actual sales, which are coming from, from fax or SXE, compared to the budgets that I set for those product lines. And that's coming from a CSV or an Excel spreadsheet. Um, now that information could be coming from your ERP as well if that's where you store it. Um, again, just to re-emphasize that, Focus doesn't care where the data sits. It doesn't care what systems um, you're running. It doesn't care if you want to combine the data from various systems. As long as there's some, some logic and some commonality amongst the data, Focus can, can, can give you that view of, of the business um, across the board, across the systems. Um, what we can also do is start to give you some views of, of maybe not quite so traditional uh, analysis. So here we're looking at what's a, a occurring, what's going on. We can see the sales by product group uh, here, and we can see it compared to the budgets. Um, I'm going to go back into a total view now. Uh, we can see our sales now, overall sales by, by customer, and we can see what's happening. But what we can also do is see what's not happening. So, so a really good starting point to kind of demonstrate this would be to say, well, let me pick one of my, my top customer here. I'm going to go for my top customer. And I'm going to drill into that customer and see what they bought from me this year. So these are the different product lines they took from me. Now, at this point, I may want to just concentrate on one product line and really kind of get, get a, an understanding of that product line. So I'm going to pick downlights. And I'm going to go in and take a look at the, the products within downlights that these guys have taken from me. So it's a good view of, of what's occurring. Um, now, I could go back to that variance view, and I could see not just what's happened, but how that compares to previous years. Um, we may even, if we, if we scroll down far, far enough, um, see customers that are down, um, or sorry, products that are down year on year within downlight. So we've got some here that they've stopped buying, which is cool. It's good to know that information. Um, but what might be really useful to know is not just who, which products have, uh, have sort of slowed down or stopped, but actually see which products from downlights they're not buying at all. So this is a lack of activity. So this is not stopped buying. This is no activity whatsoever. So it's a, it's a, it's a gap report, and it's showing you what's not occurring. And you can do this. You can look at this data. You can look at this in any direction. So it could be that perhaps you want to turn that on its head. So you want to look at your... Um, various product classes, you want to look at downlights and see who's buying them. So I see the customers that buy downlights, but now what I want to see are the customers that don't buy downlights. So these are all the customers that we work with, that we have in our system that don't buy downlights. Now you can get quite targeted with this. You could actually say, only show me the customers of a certain type or in a certain area. Uh, you could actually start the whole process with only show me customers that have sales activity. So only show me active customers that didn't buy this product line. Okay. So it's about finding out what's not happening. Uh, and that's not usually something that, that, that reporting tools do particularly well. Most reporting tools base, base uh, all of their content on activity. Uh, focus doesn't. Focus recognizes that the, the lack of activity is also important. Too. Um, and just to take it one step further, um, we can also show what should be happening. Um, and we have this button up here called the matrix. Um, now, what this does is it, it allows you to compare different um, areas of the, the, the focus database, different dimensions with other ones. Um, so if I wanted to know, for example, uh, if I want to look at my product classes, and maybe I want to pick a couple. I want to pick fluorescence and, and ballasts and hit those, put those into a matrix and put those across the top. I may now want to know. Um, down the left-hand side, which customers have bought one product line but not the other. So all the gaps in my product mix uh, are very, very obvious to me. Uh, and filtering to those to say, show me anything where this equals zero is just a case of right mouse clicking. And now I've got my hit list for, for my, my ballast sales guy to go out and speak to. Okay. And this particular piece of functionality is, is, is one of the ones that the, the guys uh, Riley Sales used to, to find that extra 100, 
extra hundred thousand uh, dollars worth of revenue. It, it, it this lets you see what's not occurring that should be, and then lets you address it. Okay. Now that matrix function is um, is is really useful for for comparing anything really. If I wanted to to use it now, perhaps I wanted to look at my um, my invoices versus my credits. I could look at invoices and credits and put those into a matrix, and I could now start to look at well, which of my vendors generates uh, the most returns in comparison to their sales. Anybody here disproportionate? Well, I can see one here that stands out for sure. Um, but maybe it's not uh, maybe it's not uh, everything that that, that customer that, that vendor sells me. Maybe it's just a particular type of product. So let me drill in a bit further and see. Well, if it seems to be across the board. Uh, maybe there's a one standout um, SKU that's a, an issue, or maybe it's one customer that buys those products that's a problem. So, so focus allows you to compare what people are buying with what they're returning and break that down by anything else. Is it a rep? Is it an order taker? Is it a vendor? Is it a product line? Is it everything that's shipped out of a particular branch? Is there a problem with the person that's picking and, and, and packing and shipping? Focus doesn't isn't prescriptive, doesn't make you look at one or two or four reports. It lets you go where you need to go in order to, uh, in order to get to the bottom of the issues. Um, and that's the, the kind of the, the bottom line with focus. It's not about um, looking at things one way, looking at um, uh, one or two or three reports. It's about looking at your data, looking at your business, and coming up um, with a, a, a a set of um, actions and a set of uh, activity that you can apply to that business off the back of relevant and useful information. Okay. Um, now we've looked at sales today. Um, Focus can help you analyze anything else. It can look at, it can pull in financials. We can pull in uh, inventory, purchasing, anything you want. I haven't covered that now, just simply because I don't want I don't want this to demo to run too long. Um, but what I'll do now is I'll just open it up. Any, any questions? This, this is kind of the, the, the end of the introduction to focus. Anything anybody wanted to ask? So uh, there's another question here. Just curious how the product connects to the cloud versions of SXC since Infor uh, does not give database access. Uh, excellent question. That, that's <laughs> that's above my. I was about to say above my um, pay grade. It's above my technical pay grade. I don't know the answer to that one. I can find out. Um, uh, let me, um, Gary, if you can if you can get the contact details of the person that asked that question, I can I can absolutely look into that. I honestly I don't know. If I could answer it, I would. I do not know. Yeah, it's a really good okay. question, and I think it's going to become more and more important because Infor is driving their customers to the cloud, uh, just like every ERP, I'm sure. So yeah. I'll, I'll put you in touch with the person that asked that question. Awesome. And and once I've got the answer, I mean, if, it, if it's something, Gary, you, you don't mind kind of just letting everybody who was on the call today know if, if everybody's interested in it, that, that's awesome. If not, we'll, um, yeah, just, just the interesting part. But I don't know. We've definitely got lots of um, customers out there on cloud ERPs. Some of the ERPs that we integrate to are only in the cloud. Um, Obviously, the gatekeeper of, of that um, data set is the, the ERP provider. So um, I just have to dig in and find out what what the proposition, what the the, the situation with is with is SXE. I, I honestly I don't know. Okay. Yeah. And if you can get a quick answer, that would be better. And I can certainly um, send it to everybody that's registered for the webinar. Brilliant. Thank you. So um, there's one person who's got their hand raised, and Maria. It looks like you didn't enter your PIN number. So you're going to have to enter it uh, before I can unmute you. Uh, but your PIN number is 126. So if you just enter pound, 126 pound, uh, I can unmute you. So, and in the meantime, uh, we'll move on to the next question. <clears throat> what is the effort to upgrade from version 661 to the most current version? And what would you say is the greatest benefit to the upgrade? Um, so, it, uh, excellent question. So, 
the the effort involved to to upgrade to the, the latest version the, the, there's a there's a few steps first of all you just need to, we need to make sure that um the the all of the the databases um and configurations that that you currently have are compatible with the very latest version so um uh, everything should be forwardly compatible we have to go through that process and check that they are if for any reason um if for any reason they're not we need to go through the the, the remedial process to to um to make them compatible, um, depending on where the the, the software uh, is hosted, if it's an on on premise or in the cloud, um, the next steps will be will be determined by that. But but it's it's a case of scoping out is the is the server um, and the environment uh, uh, up to speed and, and capable to, to to take the latest version. Do it, so we do have all the pre prerequisites. Is the configuration that uh, are the databases and what we've implemented already uh, compatible with the latest version? Um, and then it's just a case of um, of getting it on the schedule with our um, with our services team to, to to perform that upgrade. So um, it's it, we, we demoed our brand new version at our recent user conference, and I think within before we'd finished presenting it, we already had about <laughs> 50 requests for upgrades. So uh, lots of people wanted to get, want to get on the latest version. We're working through that list at the moment and working through that process. Um, if, if that question came from a, yeah, if that question came from a customer, the, 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 the best person to speak to, the best person, the way to, to route that question would be through to your, uh, your account manager. Um, what they'll do is they'll get you on the list um, for, for upgrade and um, hopefully communicate um, where you are in that list, list and, and, and what we need to do to get you uh, bumped up it. Okay. And then um, can somebody asked if you could just touch on the scheduling again. Yeah, absolutely. So, so any um, any view that we have in here, anything that we we've created in Focus. So it, it could be a. Um, it could be a list of customers and, and uh, invoice and credit values, for example. You hit save on that. You give that um, uh, uh, a name, so it could be uh, invoice versus credits. That's now uh, a, um, a favorite. That could be shared either by putting it into a folder, which you could have one or multiple people accessing that folder, or you could go off and share that with various people within the business. So you could pick a series of users, and then you hit save. Once you've saved that favorite, that favorite can then, people can log into Focus and run that favorite. But what they can also do is they can, run, right next to where you click to run that favorite, is a, a, little, um, a little icon with a, um, an envelope next to it which says um, subscribe, and that subscribe then allows you to pick um, how you'd like to receive it. So do you want to receive it as a CSV or a PDF or an Excel attachment? And when do you want to receive it? Every, every day, week, month, and what, and what time? Can you show it? Yeah, give me two seconds. I need to get back to my home favorites. So go manage favorites. So here now I've got a list of all the all my personal favorites. Every single one of those has a uh, an icon next to it. If I click on that now, I can say send me that as a PDF attachment. Uh, I'd like to receive that every Friday, um, and I'd like to receive that at, at 9 p.m. and subscribe. So that's an individual user choosing to subscribe to a, a report that they have. If you're an administrator, if you log in as an administrator, you can go through and, and pick. You have a very similar screen to this. I don't have access to that in my demo environment, but you have a similar screen where you can pick uh, a favorite, hit subscribe, and then you get to choose which users sub subscribe to it. So you can do it both directions. All right, very good. That's the end of the questions. Awesome. Well, um, all I would say is, in that case, thank you very much for, for taking the time to look again at Focus. Really appreciate it. If you want to know more about Focus and what we can do, if you want to arrange a one-on-one a -on -one demo or, or dig a bit deeper, then by all means reach out to us. Um, our contact details, if you want to send a, an email to, to Jamie Brooks, jamie.brooks at focussoftware.com. Alternatively, um, just let, let reach out through Gary and he'll, he'll pass the information on to us and we'll, um, 
we'll take it from there. Okay. Awesome. Well, thanks. well, thanks. Have a great rest of your week. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, take care and see you all at Untug next next year, hopefully. Sounds good. Thank you all. Have a great day.